and uh, fun times this summer are coming soon. We pray that you would be with us as we study uh, the, the second article of the Creed here this evening, uh, that we might grow in knowledge and in wisdom, and uh, that our faith might uh, move mountains. For we pray this in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we are continuing with the the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Does anybody remember what the second article is? I didn't write it up there, so you're going to have to tell me. I must not have done a good job last week. <laughs> Either that or none of them have done their memory work, or they did their memory work and then forgot it right afterwards. So. Or both. Or both. The first article is, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Second article is, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He ascended to the from thence he will very good very good that's the second article you guys have to have that memorized and you have to say it to either me or joe before the end of the month okay which is a week less than a week away so come on get, get to work on it uh some of you have done it some of you have not all right um let's move on to the next what are the two parts to Jesus' earthly life called? I have pictures of them up there. Anybody want to guess what they might be called? What's the picture on the left? Yeah. What's the picture on the left? No, no, no. Just tell me what the picture on the left is a picture of. Jesus dying on the cross. Good. What's the picture on the right a picture of? Jesus up in heaven, sitting on his throne, right? Okay, so the first one is a depiction of Christ's humiliation. The second one is a depiction of Christ's exaltation. These are the two parts to Jesus's life, his humiliation and his exaltation. This evening, we're going to be talking about Christ's humiliation. Next week, Joe will be leading you through Jesus's exaltation. He gets the happy stuff, I get the the uh, sad stuff uh, this week, all right? But that's the two parts to Jesus's life, his humiliation and his exaltation. What was Jesus's humiliation? What does it mean to be humiliated? Or to humiliate yourself, yeah. Okay. Yeah, being made fun of, and that is definitely part of Jesus's humiliation, because uh, um, when he was, after he was arrested, uh, the, the soldiers especially, the Roman soldiers especially, mocked and spat at him and made fun of him in many ways, you know, um, uh, they, they dressed him in robes and said, oh, you're really a king, are you? And then would beat him and stuff like that. So um, I think his being made fun of is a lot worse than what a lot of kids go through today, but it's still bad either way, right? Okay, good. What else is humiliation? In a nutshell, humiliation means to be lowered, to be made lower, okay? And so Jesus' humiliation are the steps that Jesus took to make himself less and less so that he could exalt us and take us up to heaven, okay? Uh, humiliation means to be made low, to be made less, um, to, to uh, uh, along those lines, okay? And so that's what Jesus did. It's yeah. a good way to yeah. uh, remember that. If you look at the word humiliation, you can find the word human in there. <laughs> okay. That's how... And that's kind of what we're talking about. Well, and, and basically what it is, is Jesus is God, and he became human. That's a step down, okay? <laughs> and then Jesus, while he was human, went to the cross. That's another step down. So these are all downward steps, okay? 
that Jesus took uh, in order to, uh, to save us from our sins, basically. And so these are the, the downward steps that Jesus took. It started up here, went down, 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 and then uh, uh, until, until his humiliation was over with. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the steps to Jesus' humiliation. Okay. And the first step to his humiliation is that picture right there. Does anybody want to guess what that picture is a picture of? Yeah. It's Gabriel talking to Mary. And then what's up in the upper left? That's the dove. What is the dove a symbol of? Or, or who, who is the dove a symbol of in artwork a lot of times? The Holy Spirit. Okay. And so the dove is, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, God, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit. And so this is a picture of the fact that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. That's what you should write there for step number one. The first step to his humiliation is that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Okay, next one. That one should be easy for all of you. What's that a picture of? Born of the Virgin Mary. Very good. Okay. Uh, Jesus was born. So he was conceived. That was his first step to his humiliation. His next is he was born of the Virgin Mary. Okay. And his next. Oops, I have two up there. Oh, okay. Next one. What's happening here? This is, yeah. He was suffering under, he suffered under Pontius Pilate. Very good. Uh, this is uh, what Haley was talking about earlier. This is the part where he was being, well, he was being more than just made fun of. He was also being beaten and, and other things done to him, okay? Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Number four, he was, yeah, he was crucified, okay? He was crucified, meaning he was nailed to the cross, okay? All right. Number five. What is that a picture of? He died. They're taking his body down off the cross. Okay? This is a depiction of them taking his body down off the cross because he is dead. All right? Not everybody who was crucified died. Most people did. But every once in a while, somebody would survive. Um, not very often. Okay. And then the last one, he was buried. And he was buried. That is the tomb filled with his body. Okay. Joe, when it gets close to quarter after, let me know. Okay. We're going to be going fast today. I apologize for that, but we have a lot of material to cover. And I, um, so let's get back to it. Jesus' humiliation shows us his dual nature. What is Jesus' dual nature? What does it mean to have a dual nature? Closest I can come up with is, say your mom is a Cherokee and your dad is from Germany, you could have a dual nature. You would be half Cherokee, half, half German, okay? That would be a dual nature, okay? So what, are Jesus, what is Jesus' dual nature? Close, very close. Very close, still. His dual, his dual nature, Jesus himself, okay? He is the son. What is his nature? What is he? What is Jesus? He is both, go ahead, Joe. He is both God and human, or man. He was a male, so male human would be a man, okay? He is both God and man okay now what gets really confusing is all of jesus is god and all of jesus is man not half god and half man okay he's 100 percent human and he's 100 percent man it's bad math okay my wife hates bad math 
but in this case, she likes bad math because this is what Jesus says. It's impossible to be both 100% human and 100% God, but God specializes in the impossible, okay? And since he can do the impossible, that's what he's done here, okay? He is both God and human, which means that he has the characteristics of both. What are some characteristics of God that Jesus would have because he's God? Huh? Miracles. miracles. Okay, so he's powerful, right? All powerful, okay? Because he can, he can do those miracles. He's all powerful. What else? What other characteristics of God would Jesus have because he is God? He's all powerful. What else? He's all knowing. Okay. He has the ability to forgive. Uh, he is eternal. Okay. What is one quality, what is the quality of humanity that Jesus needed? Okay. What is, one, what is the one and only thing that humans can do that God cannot do? See if I can get, if these guys can answer this, this puzzle. What is the one and only thing that humans can do that God cannot do? This is quite the puzzle. There's one and only one thing that humans can do that God cannot do. What is it? Yeah. Sin. Okay, there are two things that God, <laughs> that, 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 that humanity can do that God cannot do. Technically, God could sin if he wanted to, but he doesn't. So, um, it's, it's a result of sin. Yeah. Uh, no. That's, you're, you're on the right track, though. I know where you're going. We, uh, we encounter it all the time, usually with old people, sometimes with young people, like if they get into an accident or something. What? Die. die. Okay? Die. Okay? What Jesus needed to do was die. God cannot die. And so that's why Jesus had to be human. Okay? Let's go on to the next slide. Sorry. Um, so why did Jesus have to be fully God? Go ahead and put the answer up there. Because only God could pay the price that our sins deserved. Okay? No human being was good enough. No human being was powerful enough. Uh, no human being was pure enough to be able to pay the price that our sins deserve because we can't even pay the price our own sins. How could we pay the price for somebody else's sins? We couldn't. So only God could die for our sins. Why did Jesus have to be fully human? Go ahead, next slide. So that he actually could die to pay that price. Okay? So that's why Jesus had to be human. He had to be God because he had to be all-powerful, pure, perfect, he had to be human so that he could die. All right? And so that's what, what the, the, the dual nature of, of Jesus is all about. He's both God and human so that he can be perfect, a perfect sacrifice, but also so that he could be a sacrifice and he could die on our behalf. All right? Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's go on to, to uh, the first step in Jesus' humiliation is his conception. And since we are having to cover a lot of stuff, I'm going to read this passage, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, and then we'll answer the questions from it. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 20. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David... Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. What is special about Jesus' conception? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. <laughs> That's okay. 
ears. That's the problem. So, yeah. I think she had it correct. She, I, it sounded like she had it correct. I just didn't catch every word. So, yeah. Um, what is special about Jesus' conception? <sighs> They're going to make me say it. <laughs> he wasn't conceived by sex. All right? Okay? Every other human being was conceived because their parents had sex. He, uh, he was not conceived through sex, okay? He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, yes. So, yeah, he definitely wasn't born a sinner, yeah. <laughs> uh, because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit placed the second person of the Trinity, the Word, the Son of God, placed the entity in Mary's womb, okay? Um, uh, and, yeah, that's, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, that's, that's what happened, is the Holy Spirit somehow placed in her womb, okay? And you answered the second question. <laughs> Why did Jesus have to be conceived this way? Um, because he had to be born without sin, okay? Jesus had to be sinless, without sin, without corruption, or anything, Okay? Uh, the Old Testament is famous for saying, um, in sin did my mother conceive me. Um, Jesus was not conceived in sin. He was conceived purely, holy, through the Holy Spirit. Okay? And we already answered this question. Why did Jesus have to be sinless? Why did Jesus have to be pure and holy? Yeah. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, he's not just God-like, he is God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but to be divine, to be God-like, yeah, to be perfect. Why does he have to be perfect? Why does he have to be God-like? Okay, why does he have to be God? Why does he have to be perfect? Yeah. Because, so that his sacrifice would be good enough, right? So that when he died on the cross for our sins, his sacrifice would be good enough. If he was only 90% good, it wouldn't have been good enough to pay for our sins. He had to be 100% perfect and good and pure and holy so that his sins or so that his sacrifice would be good enough to, to, uh, to pay the price that our sins deserve. And so that's why Jesus had to be sinless. That's why he had to be God-like or God, um, why he had to be perfect and pure and holy, okay? Well, so that he could do that. All right, let's move on to the second step in Jesus's humiliation. So step one is his conception. Step two, the next step down, is his birth. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Again, I'll read these. All right. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That was, by the way, written hundreds of years before Jesus was born. That was in existence hundreds of years before Jesus was born, and it still prophesied him. All right. Um, why did Jesus have to be born of a virgin? <laughs> That's a tough question. Yeah, these are tough questions today. Um, why did Jesus have to be born of a virgin? Well, let me ask this question. I'm going to start asking some leading questions, okay? How many virgins do you know give birth? Zero, right? <laughs> Why not? Why don't virgins ever give birth? You guys have been to biology, right? Sex ed? You guys have had sex ed too, right? Yeah. Why can't a virgin give birth? Don't be shy. 
I, I, I could be much worse than this. My dad was always much worse than this to me when I was growing up. I could be much, much, much more embarrassing. Get a virgin, give birth. Okay, good. That's that's the conception. We're 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 we've moved on to we've moved on to to being born of a virgin. Okay, why can't a virgin give birth? Okay, let's let's back up again. What is a virgin? Yes. Okay, a virgin is a person who has not had sex. Very good. Okay, now why cannot why can't a virgin give birth? Yes. Because you need sex to conceive a child. Very good. And so it is impossible for a virgin to give birth because she has not had sex, and so she has not gone through the act that would conceive a child that she could have. Okay. So why did Jesus have to be born of a virgin? If it's impossible for a virgin to give birth, why did Jesus have to be born of a virgin? Prove that he really is the Son of God. To prove that he really is the Son of God. If it's impossible for a virgin to give birth, then the only way a virgin could give birth would be by a miracle. Okay? By a miracle. The only way that a virgin could give birth is if it was by God. Okay? And only by God. We've already answered the second question, why is that a miracle? Because a virgin cannot give birth. Okay. By the way, there's one other type of woman that can't give birth either. I don't even know if I want to go here. Yeah, we don't need to go there. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking of Abraham and Sarah. Sarah was past menopause, and so she, but she still gave birth. It was another miraculous birth. All right, let's move on to the next one. Like you said, that, that just shows how miraculous God is and how powerful God is. There's no limits Correct. to God. There's, there's nothing that can hold God in a box. He can do anything. He can do, he can do anything, and, and, and yeah. And, and that's the ultimate proof that Jesus was the Son of God, it's that he who was born of a woman who never had relations. And even after she was conceived with Jesus, Joseph would not sleep with her until after Jesus was born. Never slept with her until after Jesus was born. Okay? To make absolutely sure that it truly was from God the, the child that she would bear. Okay, next one. Jesus' suffering. Isaiah chapter 53. I am going to read to you. You guys know that the Old Testament, the Old Testament that we have is the Jewish Bible. Did you guys know that? The Jewish Bible is the same as our Old Testament. Okay? Except for one thing. The Jewish Bible has cut out Isaiah chapter 53. And Jewish rabbis, Jewish teachers forbid all forbid all Jews from reading Isaiah chapter 53. Because Isaiah chapter 53 is the clearest picture of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. Okay? Um, so I'm going to read you part of that chapter. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 to 5. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that brought us peace, and by his wounds... Are we healed? Okay. Um, how much did Jesus suffer? Anybody? Yeah. A lot. That is a good word for it. How many of you see, have seen The Passion of the Christ? 
You've seen the passion of the Christ. I've seen the passion of the Christ. Now, the passion of the Christ. Okay. When I went and saw, I saw it in the theaters. Were you? Did you? Yeah. yeah. You were old enough to see it in the theater. You were in college. Okay. I saw it in the theater. Okay. It was a packed house, and everybody in that theater was bawling. All of the grown men, everybody in that theater was movie shows you graphically how much Jesus Christ suffered. And it may not have even gone far enough. You know, some people said it went too far. I don't know if it went far enough. Okay? I don't know if it went far enough. The Romans were masters at torture. Okay? The only people who were better at torturing people were Native Americans. Okay? Native Americans are phenomenal, were phenomenally good at torturing. Romans came in, in through the world, the Romans came second, okay? The Romans were incredible at torture. They made Jesus suffer so uh, Is a little bit from that. John chapter 19, verses 1 to 3. And Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. That means whipped him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. And that's just a small touch of what Jesus went through. A crown of thorns was a plant of this long, so they would put it on the, pe- the person's head, and then they would press it down into it so that these inch-long thorns would go into their, to their head and down their faces. Okay. Uh, he suffered a lot, okay, a ton, okay? But that begs the question, why did Jesus suffer? Why did he suffer? Yes, that's a very good answer. He had, why did he have to suffer? Okay. Part of the price is deserved, isn't it? Okay. If you took all of the sins throughout all of the world, throughout all of the world, it would take quite a bit of punishment to pay for them. Okay. So Jesus suffered as part of the punishment for our sins. Okay. Here's the next question. If he was God's son, why didn't he stop his son? Jesus was famous for saying to Pontius Pilate, don't you, don't you know that if I wanted to, I could call down a whole host of angels and they would protect me from you? Why did Jesus do that? Why didn't he protect himself? Why didn't he? You know, dull the pain a little bit. Right. He knew he had to feel the pain. He couldn't just go through it. He had to experience it fully and completely. He had to feel the pain. He had to feel the shame. He had to feel the the spit that was, you know, that people spat onto his face. He had to feel it every single tiny little part of it and every huge part of it, he had to feel go through. Any questions or so far? Autumn's got to go. That's one, Autumn. The crucifixion yet. All right. All right. Okay. First question is, we're not going to go into those, uh, those uh, passages right now because I've only got 15 minutes left if Autumn is leaving. Okay. In what way was Jesus executed? Yeah. He was nailed to a cross. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, does anybody know how you die if you are crucified? What, how do you die? Uh, no, actually, you don't. That was that was what I used to think. That's what I thought, but that's not actually how you die. You don't actually bleed out. Okay, um, that's 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 very smart, though. Yeah. No, you don't start 
either you die long before you would starve to death, and they don't let you die of thirst either because they put water or vinegar on sponge and put it up to your mouth for you. So you can't die of thirst either, yeah. They only, they only stab them with spears to, to, um, to check to see if they're actually dead or not, okay? So if they think that you're dead, they would stab you with a spear to make sure that you're dead. No, how do you die from crucifixion? You suffocate. You can't breathe, Okay. What happens is, is when you're hanging from the cross and you're hanging like this, it puts weight down on your diaphragm so that you cannot breathe. And so what you have to do is, to see his feet are nailed to that cross. What he has to, what you have to do is, is you have to push up with your feet, even though they're nailed to the cross. You push up and tear your, your feet a little bit more to push up so that you can breathe. Okay? Try to stay like that. <laughs> You can't, okay? Eventually your legs get tired, fall down, you can't breathe, and you try to push back up, and you do that, and then you're able to breathe, and you fall back down again, and you suffocate to death. It's a very slow, very painful, very terrifying way to die. Painful because you're nailed to a cross. Um, yeah, not to mention the cross isn't as smooth as the cross yeah. hanging on pieces of wood with slivers and you got to also remember his back was 39 times and so his back is already his flesh no skin on it whatsoever and so whenever he would push it up it would scrape along the back of the, the the cross very painful okay very long very slow way to die uh the romans like i said were great at torture and this was one way that they uh that they uh that they did it the passage psalm 22 verse 16 is the passage where his, uh, his hands and feet will be pierced. And that was written hundreds of years before crucifixion was even invented. Before even, anybody even thought to crucify a person. It was, it was written down in Psalm 22, verse 16, how Jesus would die, uh, which is just incredible. Okay? And, uh, see. Okay. That's how you die. You suffocate to death. Okay. Um, before we get into that, um, Jesus was crucified with two other Jews, and when it came close to the Sabbath, the Jewish officials were upset with the Romans because they said, we can't have these guys hanging on the cross on the Sabbath. So the Romans went out to do what? Do you guys know? They went out to break the legs, to break Jesus' legs and to break the legs of the two thieves that he was written with. Because if your legs are broken, guess what you can't do? You can't push yourself up so that you can breathe, and you just hang there and suffocate a little bit quicker, okay? But when they got to Jesus, they discovered that Jesus was already dead, okay? They didn't have to break his legs. He was already dead. And so what did they do? Because they thought he was dead? They stabbed him with a spear. What flew fell out of Jesus' body when they stabbed him with a spear? Blood and water. Blood and water came gushing out of his side when they stabbed him with a spear. When you die from suffocation, do you know what happens? Your lungs are surrounded with water. Okay? And so if you suffocated and then somebody came and stabbed you with a spear, blood and water would gush out. Okay? And so when they stabbed him with the spear, the blood and the water came gushing out, and that proved to them that he really was dead. They knew he was dead because that water came out. They knew that he had suffocated to death. Yes. Quick. All right? Okay. All right. Uh, the question next question is, why did Romans crucify people? I should have asked that differently. The actual question is, what type of people... Did Romans, did the Romans crucify? Did anybody know? Thieves, okay, thieves are some, okay? The worst criminals, okay? Uh, the thieves on the cross, they were just thieves, okay? They were, um, they were, uh, what's the right word for it? Rebels, okay? They would rebel against the, the government and they would steal against the Romans. 
Um, so they weren't just plain thieves. They were, they were more than just a thief. Normally, uh, just a regular old thief, they would just have a hand chopped off. Okay? Just. <laughs> That's bad enough, <laughs> having a hand chopped off. But these guys, they were rebel rousers. They, they rebelled against the, the, the Roman government. And so typically, there were two types of people that the Romans would crucify normally. Um, traitors or rebels and murderers. And you couldn't be a Roman citizen. If you were a Roman citizen, you could not be crucified. Okay, so Paul would have never been crucified. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was never crucified. Okay, um, so non-Roman citizens who either murdered somebody or were rebels, thieves of that sort. Okay. Safe to say it was a way to shift to like prove a point. Yeah, I I think it would deter. I think, I think it would deter people from being a murderer or a traitor a lot more than just going to prison and sitting in prison for 10 years, <laughs> you know? Um, getting crucified would be much bigger of a deterrent, I think. And yet, there was quite a few people that were still crucified. There were quite a few people that still did it. So, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so what significance that this is Romans only crucified traitors or murderers, the, the worst of the worst, what does that, what significance does that have for Jesus' death? He was the worst of the worst, right? Okay, Jesus was the worst of the worst, okay? When he was hanging on the cross, he had all of our sins placed upon him, okay? Every single time a human being has murdered Jesus was paying the price for that. Every single time a human, a human being was a traitor, Jesus was crucified for that. Every single time that a human being lied, every time they gossiped about somebody else, they, they got angry at their sister or brother and yelled at them for no reason. All of those, Jesus paid the price for that. He had to suffer the worst death he could suffer as the punishment for our sins. Okay. What other things happened to Jesus while he was hanging on the cross? Well, one big thing happened. Jesus was hanging. They tried to, to get him to drink some wine vinegar, but he refused to drink it. The other thing that happened is, I'll say Jesus' words, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? turned his back on Jesus while Jesus was hanging on the cross. Okay? That's what it means. Turn your back on somebody and have nothing more to do with them ever again. Okay? Um, my God, why have you forsaken me? God the Father forsook Jesus. That is the biggest part of Jesus' punishment. Okay? That is the most important part of Jesus' punishment. Okay? He had to be forsaken by God the Father. Otherwise, his sacrifice was meaningless. Okay? And God did that so that he would never, ever, ever have to forsake us. Okay? Okay. Um, Jesus was crucified because he was trying to make sure that the Jews didn't get I know this is a very dark, very heavy subject today, and I apologize. But, uh, it's, if it's the season of Lent, at least. <laughs> All right, Jesus' death. Okay, John 19, verse 30. Yes. Probably. Probably. I probably jumped ahead, didn't I? How did Jesus die? He died of suffocation. Okay. How does a person die from crucifixion? He dies by, by suffocating to death. Yeah. What proof do we have that Jesus actually died? There are lots of people out there that say Jesus was only on the cross for a couple of days. Okay? There's no way he died. Okay? They, were, they were wrong. They were mistaken. He didn't really die. They took him down from the cross. They laid him in the tomb, but he wasn't really dead. He somehow survived and got up and got out. Okay? Um, lots of people have been saying that. I okay? uh, have said that throughout history, is that he couldn't have possibly died. It wasn't long enough, okay? Well, first of all, Jesus was whipped 39 times before he was crucified. Uh, so he was already extremely weak, beaten 
a lot, okay? Uh, he'd lost a ton of blood, so it's perfectly reasonable that he would die within a couple of days of being on the cross. He just didn't have the strength, okay? Um, but the actual, actual true proof that Jesus was actually dead was this, the water that gushed from his side, okay? If he had been stabbed in the side and no water came out, then we would say, hey, he really, he really didn't die, okay? But because the water gushed out, that proved that he had suffocated to death, that he had actually died. Okay, I'm almost done. So, okay, and then why did Jesus have to die? Yeah. For our sins, but why? Why did he have to die? Why, why, do you, why, why did there have to be death to, for our sins? Yeah. Because that's the only punishment. God stated in the Old Testament that the forgiveness of sins can only come about by a death. Okay, and that's why in the Old Testament they would sacrifice animals. They would sacrifice animals for the forgiveness of sins in the Old Testament because only by the shedding of blood can sins be forgiven. Okay, well, Jesus did it once for everybody. So now blood does not need to be shed anymore. No, no blood needs to ever be shed again for the forgiveness of sins because Jesus Christ shed God's own blood for the forgiveness of sins. Okay. So he had to die for that reason. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if I have enough time. <sighs> no, I don't have enough time. Uh, someday I might talk about uh, the difference between physical death and eternal death and how Jesus suffered both on the cross. But when he rose again from the dead, he defeated both. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. Jesus' is burial. Okay, uh, let's look at Mark chapter 15. Really quick, 42 to 47. Okay, and when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where he was laid. Uh, how long did Jesus stay buried? What day did Jesus die on? Yeah. No, the day before the Sabbath, which would be which day? Yeah. No, he did not die on Sunday. Yeah. No, he didn't die on Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath day, by the way. Yeah. Good Friday. Okay, Jesus died on Friday, okay? He died on Good Friday. He rose again on Sunday. So how many days did Jesus stay buried? <laughs> technically two, technically two 24-hour periods, okay? Technically two 24-hour periods, but we always say Jesus rose again on the third day. Why do we say that? Exactly. That's how Jews counted. They, they were inclusive. So they would say Friday is the day he died, Saturday, Sunday, all three. In, in, in the United States and in Europe, we don't, we're not inclusive. We would just say he died on the second day because he died on Friday, so we don't count that day, and then Saturday, Sunday. But Jews counted all three days, and so that's why we say he, he rose again on the third day. And why is that significant, that he, that he, that he rose again on the third day? Uh, that, is, that, is, that is very good. Jews were convinced that it took three days for the spirits to depart the body. Okay? 
on the third day, your spirit has definitely departed and gone forever, and your chances of coming back are nothing. Okay? And so, die, so, so waiting till the third day meant that, according to Jewish tradition and theology, his spirit had definitely departed his body and gone away forever. Okay? And that is why it's significant. All right. Any questions or comments? I'm sorry I kind of rushed through this. We had a ton to go through this evening, and we had to do it in 45 minutes. Um, any questions, comments? All right. Well, after that terribly depressing and dark and extremely sad um, class today, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. A happy rest of the week. Joe gets the happy start next week.